Welcome to Barbell Logic Rewind. Welcome to Barbell Logic. I'm Scott Hambrick, and I've got Matt Reynolds with me. And today, what's up, everybody? <laughs> we have our, <laughs> our guest John Wilson with us today. You know the nickname I have for John Wilson. <laughs> Johnny Red Light. Johnny Red Light. Johnny, Johnny Red Light because Red John light. Wilson has never given me a white light in a squat attempt in my entire life. Now, That's I will say didn't deserve one. it's because I, I definitely never deserved a white. I don't know that I've ever actually squatted below parallel at a meet. I get dangerously close. Yes, we're well aware of this. <laughs> and so, hey, man, thanks for being on the show. So what do you, what do you have Thank to you. do to get a, red, a white light, though? Three. So for the people that don't know, John, yeah. tell them what you got to do to get a white light. Squat below parallel. <laughs> Get that hip three, crease below three to four, that kneecap. Three to four, three to four inches crease. below parallel for John Matt Reynolds. It and pretty much has to have his butt touching his calves. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Which my hips don't work that way anymore. Okay. Well, so. Glad you're here. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I got diagnosed with stage four metastatic kidney cancer in September of 2015. And at that time, the doctor gave me three to six months to live. And since this is late October 2017, obviously there's something wrong there. <laughs> You're all yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes. So let's start even before you got diagnosed with cancer. I was doing the spa thing, training actually at another place here in town and thought I was doing something. Basically came over here and found out what real strength training was. And when I first started doing this, my body weight went from about two and a quarter to 303 in about a year. <laughs> Wow. A so, good 303. A good 303. Yeah. Yep. So that was what, about 85, 86? 86. Somewhere there? Yeah, yep. 86. And then you stayed, I was going to say, so what do you weigh, how tall are you and what do you weigh now? I'm about six one and a half, and I weigh about 268 now. So you've had stage four <laughs> kidney just... cancer for, for three years? No, for two years. For two years. Yeah. And you've maintained a body weight over 260 pounds. Throughout, and one of the things we see, I guess, with cancer patients that often is the thing that kills them is the wasting away. Yeah. Yes. And you haven't. Man, I have watched you train over the last several years coming in here. I know you've told me stories where you've trained through chemo, right? I'm on chemo as we speak. I take chemo every single day. And how long have you been on chemo? I've been on chemo for two years. Since, since the beginning. Yeah, two yeah. years straight. What's it like training? I mean, you've trained healthy. You know what training healthy feels like. What is, what is it like to train sick and on chemo and cancer drugs? Um, basically, you have a constant feeling of being sick to your stomach. Um, the recovery time being on chemo is, well, there is no recovery. I mean, you it ravages your whole body. It's poison. So it, it doesn't distinguish between good cells and bad cells. It literally destroys anything in its path because it's trying to kill cancer. So anytime I train, I'm really almost never completely recovered, but mm. my choice is either continue to train or die because I'm going to start losing weight and muscle mass. Yeah, sure. What, what was it like the first week after you found out? Was it a surprise? I assume you went in, there was something going on, and you went in and got checked out, or what was the story? <clears throat> Excuse me, I was in a complete and total state of shock. Um With all humility, before uh, about four days before I got four or five days before I got diagnosed, I uh, pulled 490 for five on deadlift with no belt. At and what age was that? How old were you then? Uh, 56. Okay, 56 uh, years old. That's 490 <laughs> for five. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Strong. And then I, I, I'm, at that time, I still was having some problems breathing. And I went ahead and trained anyway. And then within a week, my lung collapsed completely flat. Mm. And um, I thought I had bronchitis or something, and instead I went to the ER, and they said you need to go straight to a bigger hospital that can deal with you. And they said early, early looks like diagnosed, looks like cancer, looks like you got some spots. And then within a week, they told me that I was I had stage four cancer. Mm. And so then, was it, what was that next week like? How does that play out in your brain? You know, who are you close to? What do you? What does that look like even on a practical level? Again, in a complete and total state of shock. I never expected anything like that, uh, nor did I, I guess you hear about other people getting cancer, but it's one of those things, you, you, it'll never happen to me. And um, I'll be honest with you, right when I first got diagnosed, I had a complete and total breakdown. Sure. sure. I had a breakdown. Again, I, I, I just couldn't believe that, that, A, I had cancer, and then after... Um, 
the urologist came in and said, well, you've got a very aggressive form of cancer. It usually gets people very soon, and you have three to six months to live and get your affairs in order. Mm. So um, I was an emotional wreck. Sure. So. so after you got that diagnosis, how long did it take you to come back and train again? It took me about 13 weeks because I had a major chest surgery while I was in the hospital. Um, mm. They scraped my entire chest cavity and they had to detach my lung from my chest wall. And mm. then they got cancer out of both my lungs and then cauterized it. And then they also did one more procedure where they shot chemicals in my left lung so my lung wouldn't fill back up with fluid. Mm. So it took me, like I said, about 13 weeks to come back and start training again. In that 13 weeks, you got a major surgery before you start training. Something had to have changed in your brain, in your mind. So what's that first session look like when you come back after after being diagnosed with cancer, 13 weeks without training? Now, you were training, obviously, really hard going into it. Uh, Do you remember that first session? Ugly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. Ugly. Uh, because I couldn't put very much pressure on my chest or stomach because that's where my surgery was. And mm. I still had a, it was very tender and very sore. I think I might have squatted 95. Sure. Probably and couldn't then, even perform a that Salva. Sounds, that sounds like a lot to me. It does. Yeah. I mean, that sounds fine. I, I, I might have been able to squat 95, and, and I, I might have pressed 65. And I don't, I'm not even sure if I deadlifted at all, but if I did, it might have been 135. But it was something tiny. So they sure. cut your ribs, right? I mean, they cut, yes. your, or cut your sternum. Yeah, they had, well, they, no, they, they went through the side. Mm -hmm. And then um, what they did was I, for about um, four or five days, I had, an open wound with two tubes sticking in yeah, my yeah. side. Yeah, the drain. A drain tube and a, 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 yeah, a drain tube and then also a wound back. Mm. So how long did it take you to start building your strength back up and where did where did that peak at over the last couple of years? How, how strong have you been able to get on with stage four kidney cancer? It took me a little while. It is, as you know, we, we don't do things here. Nothing is done to where we have to have, conquer the world and a few days or even a few weeks. Took me a little while to start putting some strength back on. My squat depth got better. Um, squat, wait, white, like white light level? <laughs> no. Okay, good. See, we can Never, be, uh, we can uh, be uh, approximately uh, Matt Reynolds level, okay. which was to be, well, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I, I yeah, thought I, if it fixed it, we needed to give Matt cancer. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, again, I cycled my uh, training uh, back and forth. And before I uh, had my kidney removed in 2016, I pulled... 500 for a triple. Oh, my God. That's, That's incredible. So, That's so the, the week before you got diagnosed, you pulled four, what did you say, 490? 490, 490, 490 for, five, for right. five. So what was your what was your triple at that point, do you know? I have no idea. That's all I did. But like I said, I, I, I did that 490 for five without, without a belt. Right, right. Um, I have no idea. But the, 560, you know. Yeah, yeah honestly, honestly yeah. 500 for three was really not a max set. I had more in me. Yeah. And my body weight also had, had gotten up to about 283. So body weight. I want to know what the doctors yeah, what think. I mean, this is so bizarre. It has to be so bizarre for your, like your oncologist to go in and, and go, wait, you, you're gaining weight and you're getting stronger. While, John's, John's while, really smiling right while now. you have stage four kidney cancer <laughs> and you're on chemotherapy as we speak, like that's, that, that has to be unheard of for them. Again, with all humility, every doctor I've seen clear from the oncologist to the nephrologist to the urologist. They all have all just hooked to the end of the lamp. Anyway, um, they've been nothing short of amazed because typically people that have what I have, first of all, don't live this long and they do not gain weight and or get bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so do they attribute it to the weight training? I mean, do they, do, will they go far enough? Yes. Far yeah, have they bought into that? this? Um, my first oncologist, no, he told me I needed to do light weights and just maintain. And I just shook my head and left and basically couldn't wait till I got back into the gym so I could start training again sure. and doing what we do. Right. So, yeah. And some of the other guys though, started to buy into this. They understand what you're doing now at this Absolutely. point. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I assume supportive because you're kind of a medical miracle at this point. I had a guy that I talked to on the phone the other day, he was 27 whose doctor told him he had dis degeneration in his back. Right. And, uh, and so I thought, man, I, I probably can't train. He fell and, out uh, of his tree house when he was 12. Yeah, and right. Well, yeah. Um, that's why we're doing this episode, right? right? Because this, you know, it almost has become trite 
in the world of memes and the internet of the your excuses and valid sort of stuff. But I mean, here's a guy with stage four kidney cancer for two years on chemo the entire time has had two massive surgeries, right? Two major surgeries in that time period? Three. Three, three major yeah. surgeries in yeah, that time period. Yeah, because he just had a oh, discectomy. Th- right, because you're right. Because you're, I just had a discectomy August the 31st. Yeah, of this year. And right. You, and just got back into training from that. You've, I saw you've been in a sling and, and back to training now. So are you still sore? from Very. <laughs> very <laughs> and sore. It, it'll um, come, and it'll come back. Just yeah. Like it and, did the last time. I mean, I've been training since 2011 with a double knee replacement. <laughs> and so I don't <laughs> like that's the thing he forgets to mention. Right, the double knee replacement. Yeah, I had a double knee replacement yeah. in uh, 2011, what? and so I've been training with that. And so you say double knee replacement? Did they did they did they replace them both on one day or did yes you, they did they oh, did <laughs> yes in fact they did. Did you wow. have it done here or down in Dallas? I had it done here. Wow, I had it not done, as yeah. sketchy. See, I need to have my hips done, but no, I have I'm yet to find someone who'll do both hips on the same day, which is actually what I want. I don't know if that's a great. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this was like an insurance deal. My deductible was going to go up, and I said, "Listen, okay, if we can do this, if you'll do it." Just do it and get the misery and pain over with now. Yeah. And he did, and needless to say, I was pretty much completely helpless. <laughs> sure. For. Quite some time. Yeah, sure. So, sure. You know, I, I will enjoy you being helpless for a little while. Yeah. Yes. I will too. Yes. I'll get a, I'll get a little bell. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's so, and that here we are today. So, yeah. You know, no excuses. I can either uh, make excuses or make gains. You sure. can't do, can't do both. So, so I'm going to ask a, a hard question, but it's something that I'm sure you've thought a lot about. Like, what, what does the future look like for you? You know, what is your outlook on life tomorrow? And I, I know you can't look at even five years in the future, but what does that look like? I don't know, or do you? Yeah. Um, no, I live one day at a time. Yeah. Since I got diagnosed with cancer in 2015, my spiritual life has never been the same. Sure. My relationship with God is... is uh... It's good. <laughs> um, been better than ever. Um. I don't know why uh, I'm in the place that I'm in today, but um, he's used this journey in the last two years mightily sure. uh, for his glory. Um, I've been able to encourage and bless people who made me don't even have cancer in the midst of my situation and like I said, I, I've never been closer to God ever in my life than in the last two years. Mm. So I, I don't, um, again, it makes me appreciate being able to wake up each and every day, have air in my lungs, um, back to appreciating the small things. Sure. Okay, not taking them for granted. It's an amazing story. It's a story that um, I think... <laughs> well, it's helping people right now. <laughs> you, you, you change people's lives, yeah. man. I mean, that's the amazing piece of this is that in spite of the fact that you've been given this thing that is brutal and horrible, you've been able to turn it into something good. It's that passage in scripture that like you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. That's and, right. and there is that in your story. There's, there's That's no right. doubt. And so, Absolutely. How do you feel about your quality of life over the last couple of years? And obviously it's not the same as being healthy, but I know one of the things that we're always talk about with the strength training is that it allows people to maximize their quality of life for as long as possible. I know for me, I watched my grandparents, uh, some of my grandparents, slowly die over the course of seven, ten years, right? I want to live life to its fullest and then die, right? (laughs) Right. And uh, and so what's that look like for you? What's your quality of life look like over the last couple of years with the strength training? It's actually gone up, though there's certain things that (laughs) (laughs) I'm not able to do because some of my mobility is still limited and I'm... Honestly, still busting up scar tissue from when I had my very first surgery two years ago. Um, mm. My quality of life today is, is great, mm. just for lack of a better word. Um, I am able to stay able to, still able to come in here and train. And since this system is based on small gains over a long period of time, again, it's ideal. Um, I, if I don't have it that day or I'm having a bad chemo day, then I can either stay the same or to go up maybe one or two pounds that day. But the thought of ever not training or shrinking back in fear has never once crossed my mind. It's good. So, never. Um, that's not 
that's not acceptable. And it's not a good example for my son. And again, it's not a good example for anyone who's going through any type of life-threatening illness. It lets them know that no matter what you're told by who, your doctor, that you have every reason to live and stand up and fight and do the best you can do. And when you can't do very well that day, then you try again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. it's good. So it's an amazing story, man. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being on the show. It's been incredible having you on this week. Gosh, I love John Wilson's story. And for those of you that listened to that several years ago and remember that story, so I want to give you an update for 2020. Talked to John yesterday and he's still fighting. He still has stage four terminal cancer. Cancer came back in both his lungs. He is on double the chemo than from what he was previously on, but he's training. He's doing rack pulls and he's about to start into squats again. His body weight's only down eight or 10 pounds. So he's trained all through it. Uh, he actually had major back surgery not that long ago, just a couple months ago. And so, um, you know, if you're the praying type, send some up for John Wilson. I'm sure he would love to hear words of encouragement from you at code of many colors at att.net coat of many colors at att.net and john's still training still living still kicking not losing much weight and uh that is the attitude that he's had the entire time is he's going to keep fighting and stay around just as long as he can so good luck to john our prayers and thoughts are with you sir